China no longer forgives two chip giants. Why those who abandon China are ultimately abandoned. The two chip giants that once controlled 70% of high end global chip capacity, and whose word was law, TSMC and Samsung, have recently collectively lowered their posture. TSMC CEO personally led a delegation to Nanjing, and the president of Samsung Greater China made three visits to Shenzhen. In their pockets, they carried a combined total of over $30 billion in foundry orders, showing the deepest humility. However, the Chinese market today is no longer the backyard they can command at will. At the TSMC plant in Nanjing, an EUV lithography machine worth over $5 billion sits gathering dust in its custom wooden crate, the plastic film on its packaging still unwrinkled. The situation at Samsung's 12-inch wafer production line in Xi'an is worse. Equipment utilization has fallen below 35%, and many workers are rotated off-shift and waiting for assignments. It is stunning to recall that five years ago, a simple threat of supply cutoff could cripple Huawei's high-end phones. How did these powerful, choke point, players end up begging Chinese companies for orders, cash in hand? Many people are intimidated by nanometer process technology, believing that chip manufacturing is a kind of celestial craft only a few nations can master. But the logic behind SMIC's use of DUV lithography to create 7 nanometers chips is similar to making a handmade photo album at home. Simply put, an EUV lithography machine is like a professional photo printer that produces high-definition pictures at the push of a button. A DUV machine is like a standard printer, which was originally only good for printing fuzzy images at 14 nanometers. To produce the ultra-clear 7 nanometers version, engineers had to relentlessly iterate. First, print a layer with precise alignment, then use special chemical reagents to fix the pattern. Wipe off the excess material, then print another layer from a different angle, repeatedly refining and superimposing the image, sometimes requiring up to eight overlay exposures. This process allows zero tolerance for error. The laser precision of the lithography machine must be controlled to one ten thousandth of a hair's width, and the workshop temperature error cannot exceed 0.1 degrees Celsius. SMIC engineers reportedly stayed in the workshop for three consecutive months working until their eyes were bloodshot just to figure out the parameters. It was this stupid method, mocked by foreign media, that, during the complete EUV embargo of 2023, pushed the 7 nanometers chip from the lab to the production line. When the Huawei Mate 60 Pro launched with this China core, the world was stunned. This was not a stupid method. It was the survival wisdom painstakingly carved out of a desperate situation a bloody path that broke through the blockade. Even more revolutionary is the latest report from Moody's, which shows that mainland China's chip capacity is projected to reach 21.3% of the global total in 2025, about to surpass South Korea's 21.6%. For the 28 nanometers mature process, our capacity share is as high as 33%, making us the absolute world leader. Even ASML admits that the Chinese market accounts for 42% of its revenue. Without China, their lithography machines cannot be sold. This complete reversal began with a shocking betrayal five years ago. Today, we will thoroughly dissect the self-destructive path of TSMC and Samsung, examine how China's chip industry fought back in desperation, and uncover the brutal truth behind the global chip landscape. The betrayal five years ago the beginning of the end. In September 2020, a U.S. prohibition order became the litmus test. TSMC immediately signaled its compliance. It stopped manufacturing 7 nanometers chips for Huawei, even though Huawei accounted for 14% of its revenue at the time. Samsung was even harsher, directly announcing a halt to the supply of memory chips, completely disregarding the fact that Huawei was its third-largest global customer spending billions annually on its products. Their rationale was clear. TSMC relied on US EUV equipment and needed to obey to secure its technology. Samsung wanted to leverage US influence to seize Huawei's market share. At the time, Western media were gloating, claiming China's chip industry was an unweaned child. But they ignored that the European Union took the exact opposite approach. The EU Chips Act, 
passed in 2023, allocated 43 billion euros to boost capacity but never forced companies to choose sides. It even encouraged joint ventures with TSMC and Infineon. Germany's subsidies to TSMC came with no conditions for technology sharing, and France directly invited Chinese companies to participate in R&D, a sharp contrast to the US's high-handed demand for TSMC to submit 50,000 pages of technical documentation. The greatest irony is that the US subsidies TSMC and Samsung banked on were essentially empty checks. TSMC's Arizona plant, announced five years ago, saw its investment balloon from $12 billion to $65 billion but only received $6.6 .6 billion in subsidies, and was simultaneously required to share its 3 nanometers technology with Intel. Samsung's Texas plant fared worse. After investing $17 billion, a dust storm turned the equipment into scrap metal, and it has yet to produce a single qualified chip. The $4.75 billion in promised U.S. subsidies did not arrive until the end of 2024. Commentary Analysis The tragedy of TSMC and Samsung was never a matter of bad luck. They fundamentally bet on the wrong outcome. They treated geopolitical maneuvering as a guaranteed commercial shortcut and willingly tied their corporate destiny to someone else's war chariot. TSMC, relying on its control of 7 nanometers technology, thought it could Control everything with U.S. EUV equipment. Forgetting the trust Huawei showed by paying billions in advance to secure capacity. Samsung was even more outrageous, cutting off Huawei's memory chip supply to capitalize on the sanctions dividend. Disregarding that this third largest global customer had once helped it weather the lows of memory price cycles. The essence of business is never about dependence on the powerful, but about long-term gain built on trust. Huawei trusted TSMC's contract first principle. Chinese consumers bought Samsung products because they recognized its reliable technology. Yet, both giants personally destroyed their own brand reputations. Look at the clarity of the EU. Germany's 5 billion euro subsidy for TSMC's Dresden plant explicitly stated No technology transfer clauses attached. France invited Chinese companies to participate in automotive chip R&D clearly stating that market sharing is a win-win. This sincerity resulted in 20 billion euros in private investment flowing involuntarily. In contrast, the US offered TSMC a $6.6 .6 billion sugar-coated pill, while forcing it to hand over 3 nanometers technical manuals and prohibiting it from taking Chinese foundry orders. It promised Samsung $4.75 billion in support, while watching its Texas factory be destroyed by a dust storm. This is not the action of an ally. It is the act of treating companies as pawns to be exploited and discarded. Crucially, they miscalculated the importance of the Chinese market. In 2020, China's chip market accounted for 53% of the global total, making it TSMC's largest revenue source and Samsung's memory chip. Foundation when TSMC cut 14% of its revenue for the U.S. ban, and Samsung lost billions in annual orders for the sake of taking a side, they abandoned not just a market, but the ballast that anchors a company through cycles. The dusty lithography machine in Nanjing and the half-empty production line in Xi'an are not signs of Chinese pettiness, but the iron law of the commercial world, the price of betrayal is never a temporary loss but the permanent forfeiture of the right to participate. They walked that wrong path with such determination. Now, their regret is equally profound. Counterattack from desperation. China's chip breakthrough code. The US once boasted it would set China's chip progress back 10 years. But they forgot that Chinese people thrive in adversity. In 2024, the Huawei Kirin chip made its comeback powered by SMIC 7 nanometers process using DUV lithography. Shanghai Microelectronics achieved the mass production of a 28 nanometers lithography machine, directly breaking ASML's monopoly and slashing the cost of mature process chips by 30%. These breakthroughs are not luck. They are the result of collaborative efforts by thousands of companies. In contrast, the choke point strategy of Western companies is backfiring. ASML's Q3 2025 financial report shows that the Chinese market accounts for 42% of its revenue, 
Without Chinese orders, its net profit would be halved. Intel is in a more awkward position. Its $30 billion factory being built in Germany is 18 months behind schedule, and its attempt to compensate with the Ireland factory only covers 15% of the Chinese market's capacity, while logistics costs have increased by 40%. The data speaks for itself. China's chip self-sufficiency rate was only 15% in 2022, but is projected to hit 25% in 2025, with design revenue approaching $100 billion. Meanwhile, TSMC's market share in China has plummeted from 22% to less than 8%, and Samsung's memory chip revenue in China has dropped by 40%. More startlingly, China's share of global 12-inch wafer capacity is set to hit 31% in 2025 and an astonishing 42% by 2030, a pace that has foreign media exclaiming that. China is rewriting the chip map. Commentary Analysis The rise of Chinese chips shatters the lie that Technological monopolies are unbreakable. When the ASML CEO says China is a critical part of the global chip industry. It's less a compliment and more a statement of fact. Without the demand-driven engine of the Chinese market, chip technology would not iterate this fast. Without the competition from Chinese companies, the giants would comfortably continue earning huge profits. From shield tunneling machines to Beidou, from rare earth purification to nano applications, the Chinese people have repeatedly proven that the so-called choke point is merely a catalyst forcing us towards self-reliance and strength. The greater the pressure, the faster the growth. Global reshuffle. The new rules of the chip battlefield. The chip world today is no longer dictated solely by the US. The EU Chips Act 2.0 is on the agenda, aiming to raise its global market share from 10% to 20% by 2030. Germany is subsidizing Infineon with 920 million euros to build factories, and France is forming a local alliance with ST Microelectronics. They all understand that following the US and decoupling will only lead to market loss. Even South Korea is wavering. Samsung has quietly resumed supplying low to mid-end memory chips to China, only to find that market has already been captured by YMTC, Yangtze Memory Technologies. The reshuffling of the global chip landscape is essentially the triumph of cooperation and mutual benefit over hegemonic thinking. The US sought to build a small yard high fence through sanctions and subsidies, but ended up turning allies into competitors and pushing its own companies to the brink. China, however, is pursuing industrial upgrading with an open attitude, benefiting itself while leaving room for global enterprises. ASML can continue selling equipment, and EU companies can come to cooperate. This is the correct path for technological development. The lessons of TSMC and Samsung serve as a warning to all companies. Technology knows no borders, and those who prioritize politics over commerce will eventually be abandoned by the market.